Thank you very much for all the uh, topics that you suggested uh, from our last two videos. And we've selected a topic that I found to be extremely common and on the minds of many of my patients when they come to see us for hormone replacement therapy. That is anxiety and depression. And I will try to explain what we do and how we establish a protocol such that we could find out exactly how to help patients, not only with hormone replacement therapy, but also how it relates to anxiety and depression. We do a survey when we have a new patient, and we have about 16, 18 topics that we discuss. And I would say the most common problem that is associated with hormone deficiencies, especially in women, is anxiety and depression. When I see the patient, sometimes we have to delineate which is from hormone replacement therapy deficiencies or which one is actually from an underlying anxiety depressive disorder, most likely related to post-traumatic stress. This is very important because we don't want to have the patient be told, oh, the hormones will take care of you, and therefore you don't have to worry. Unfortunately, many of our patients come from family doctors and other gynecologists who are already on two, three, or four psychotropic medications, a sleeping pill, an anti-anxiety pill, a thought disorder pill, and they feel terrible. They feel depressed even more so. They feel lethargic. They feel low energy. They feel low sex drive or no sex drive. And they come to me and they were told, well, maybe it's your hormones. Well, maybe it's your hormones, but also maybe it's the drugs that you're taking that you really don't need. So we have to evaluate what drugs they're on and why they're on it. It is amazing to me how many people do not know why their doctor put them on the medication. All they know, they've been taking it, quote, for years. And to me, that's a very important point. When a doctor puts you on medication, you should know the why, not the what. Not how to take it, when to take it, what dosage it is. You need to know why you're taking it, what you expect from it, and also what are the expected complications or side effects that that drug has. The great thing about bioidentical hormones is that given in the proper dosages, there are no complications because it's a natural occurring product that is identical to the hormones produced by your ovaries and adrenal glands. Therefore, there is really minimal on proper dosaging of any problems we've had with the patients over one million patient months. Let's go back to the topic of anxiety depression. When I do a history, I try to assess, especially the patients in the office, what their state of mind is. Do they look depressed? Do they look happy? Do they look content? Why not? When did it start? All these questions are part of a good history that every doctor should take and getting, knowing the patient, especially if a new patient comes in, their history, when did they begin to feel depression? And it is amazing to me how many times people say, I felt depressed my whole life. Since when? Since XYZ happened. And we go through a process which is a screening process to see if indeed they have elements of post-traumatic stress disorder that sometimes come from childhood, but is a cyclic nature, which means that it occurs in a divorce, it occurs in a moving, a loss of job, but initially it could have been something like the father leaving the home. Especially for young girls, that's very traumatic. So it has to go to what I call the original trauma. The original trauma is what really precipitated this state of mind that a patient will use the defense mechanism of depression to help deal with the pain of a trauma. Associated with that is a concept called dissociation. Dissociation is when a part of you is left in the past at that point of trauma. That separation creates anxiety. Anxiety is a normal, healthy emotion. However, if it affects your life, people go to the doctor and say, I'm anxious, even though it's a normal concept, they go ahead and put on medication that makes them lethargic, low energy, and basically not helping the cause or the etiology of their depression. So it is very important that a, a doctor should take a very complete history and really assess the patient from the entirety, not just because she comes or he comes for sex hormone replacement to just deal with that little part of their total medical history. I take pride in the fact that many, many times I'm able to delineate in this history taking, another problem separate from hormone deficiencies that occur in most women in the 40s and 50s that can accentuate the problems with anxiety and depression, but it's not the cause of it. And that is when we refer to Dr. Siegel. Dr. Siegel has been seeing our patients for about 20 years. It's an excellent adjunctive therapy that if a patient has the need for more psychotherapy that I am capable of, then they go ahead and see Dr. Siegel 
and he is an expert in what he does. And I want to introduce Dr. Siegel here, who's joined us today, to go further into exactly what he does when he sees a patient referred to by Dr. Eckert and my team. Thank you for having me. You use some important words such as symptoms and anxiety very often because they're uncomfortable feelings and we, we don't know where they're coming from or why we feel that way. The easiest way is just to, is to medicate it. However, the symptoms often lead to a time of, of wounding, uh, often in childhood. Uh, it could be trauma, abuse, neglect, or great loss, causing so much emotional pain that the child has to shut down in order to cope with it. And in shutting down, what happens is they leave a part of self behind. The emotional pain can be so overwhelming that we have no choice but to disconnect from it. And in disconnecting from our feelings, in effect, we disconnect from ourselves. Child will feel he, has, he or she has no choice but to shut down because of the circumstances that are going on at that time. Unfortunately, what happens is as we grow up, we take those, we, we unfortunately, as we grow up, those parts of self that got shut down stay shut down and stuck in the past. And so we can have symptoms that belong to uh, a younger self that got fragmented in the past and is still somewhere in the psyche. So therapy is about finding, is about using the symptoms and using them to go back to the time of wounding, as you said, the, the original trauma, and heal that, that time and recapture the part that was lost in the past and reintegrate it into the patient's emotional economy, if you will. That is, they feel more whole and more centered and less at the affect of the symptoms. So what, what we're describing here is an example of two medical specialties that have combined their uh, knowledge and experience to treat the patient as a whole patient. It's very important because I'm not a psychotherapist. However, Dr. Siegel has uh, cured a lot of these patients with underlying trauma disorders and my hormone therapy helps them with the acute anxiety separate due to the fact that hormones are now not being produced. So I call it what's left syndrome. What left syndrome means is that let's treat the hormones, let's see if we can go ahead and make a patient feel better, sleep better, feel better about themselves, feel more sexual, uh, lose some weight, gain more muscle, all these things happening that will increase the patient's self-worth. And then, only then, why I reevaluate the patient and the patient feels better about herself, sleeping better, still has the underlying trauma that is affecting her current life, that's the time when I make the referral. So I think it's important that if you're out there and you're suffering from these kind of symptoms and you're not quite able to sort out what is hormonal and what isn't, that's the time to call us because we sort that out. It's not that easy, but once we sort it out, patients say, that's right, that is exactly right. Truth speaks louder than anything. Patients know when it's correct. And that is why we're so successful in our sex hormone treatment of anxiety depression, because we actually treat the underlying cause if indeed, like I say, that's left after the hormone levels have been stabilized. So Dr. Siegel, what is it that you first do when you get a patient from Hormonify? Well, the, the first thing I do is appreciate the referral because when they come to me from you or the center, they're already medically cleared or in the process of being medically cleared. So I don't have to wonder what underlying medical conditions or, psycho or, or physical conditions uh, or hormonal conditions are interfering. I already know when they come to me that that's been taken care of. So what's left are the emotional components that I then look to and trace back to the time of wounding. Many times uh, patients come to me and we get a complete history and they're on psychotropic medication. And many times I have to actually call the doctor and ask them, why is this patient on this medication? And the answer I usually get, unfortunately, is, well, the patient is depressed and wanted something done. Well, they did something, but just because you want to treat a symptom does not mean that that is the right way to approach it. So what is the first thing you do when you get a patient referred to you for um, evaluation from Hormonify? A referral from Hormonify is different from a horm uh, is different. A referral from Hormonify is different than a, a referral from somewhere else because very often I have to figure out what's going on physically, hormonally, and if I have to make a referral out when they come from Hormonify, I know they're already medically cleared or they're in the process of being medically cleared, so I can just focus 
on the emotional components, which makes it easier for me to isolate what's really going on because I know the medical end and the hormonal end has been taken care of. So let me explain to the patients out there. When a patient comes to me with three, four medications, I don't tell you stop the medication. First of all, it's not my place to get in the middle of you and your doctor. I try to get the doctor involved with you, and you need to ask the questions that needs to be asked. If it wasn't asked originally, at least ask now. That's the first thing. Second thing is that once the hormones are all balanced out and you're feeling better and everything is working in your favor, and or you get a referral to Dr. Siegel for psychotherapy, which is a separate issue, then I sit down and I try to wean yourself down with using certain supplementations to help you increase your dopamine effect because a lot of the medications, unfortunately, are just meant to recycle old dopamine, which really is not the best way to go. So again, considering the fact that the evaluation has to be done on the intensity of your symptoms and also whether or not you know why you're even taking the medication. I can't tell you how many times I've seen patients who have been on, for example, Wellbutrin for 10, 15 years and have no idea why they're taking it. So we can't be careful because we cannot just tell you to stop the medication. So we have to supplement you first with certain uh, dopamine agonists and then we try to go ahead and wean yourself down slowly over time. We'd like to have the primary doctor involved, if we could, to perform that process. Sometimes the primary doctor doesn't want you on the medication and I don't know the motive of that, but again, patients uh, have to make that decision what's best for them. Another point I'd like to make is that when Dr. Siegel sees the patient, there is complete confidentiality, which means Dr. Siegel and I do not discuss the details of the therapy unless the patient explicitly wants me to get involved for whatever reason. It's very important because today doctors are talking about patients all the time. I go in the hospital, I hear doctors talking about patients with their names. I don't know those people, but let's say I did know those people. It's not my business to really discuss your personal medical information. Um, so Dr. Siegel and I have a complete wall here. Uh, he sees the patients. I don't have access to his file. I refer to him giving a medical history as to what is, if there is, an original trauma and what is their status as to their hormone replacement therapy and other medical indications uh, for uh, other drugs that they're taking. So he's knowledgeable of that. But I don't go further than that. Uh, patients come back to see me in two, three months and almost always, not only do they feel better, a lot of times they say their anxiety that's from the original trauma is gone. That is amazing to me in one level. On the other level, knowing what he does, he has been able to create a therapy program that is quite accelerated and quite brief in nature. It is not, he doesn't become your friend for someone to talk to. He goes into your subconscious with your help and helps you find the original trauma and then cures it by other sorts of methods that he will discuss. When someone comes to see me uh, and they're depressed or they're anxious, I'm looking at what the depression and the anxiety is about. For example, very often depression is feelings that you hold in and they don't come out. So you get depressed because you're holding it in. Anxiety is often a reflection of a disconnection inside from a time when you had to disconnect emotionally because of trauma or abuse or neglect or loss. So what, is, so what is the metaphor? Why is it metaphor therapy? Because that's how the mind thinks. We're speaking English. The, the mind does not speak English. It speaks pictures. And so when the left brain looks at the right brain, it sees a picture in the blink of an eye in the tenth of a second. And from what your left brain unconsciously sees in your right brain, you have a thought, a feeling, or a reaction. If we can change, and we can change, what the brain is telling itself, then we alleviate the anxiety or the depression. So how does the Freudian concept of superego play into the therapy? Good question, very, very important because very often we develop a very strong superego to protect ourselves. And so what begins is a, a, an inner voice that tries to keep us out of harm's way from getting punished or hurt, over time becomes an inner critic, which then takes control of our lives and expects perfection and uh, negative self-talk as a result. And so we want to go in, we want to find that inner critic, which is a reflection of the superego, and help it to help you. Because it developed to help and became fixed and rigid and limiting over time. So it's like big government. It keeps on getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> um, it's, it's very important that patients understand that in, for example, our weight loss division, the first thing we have to approach is this 
self-critical nature that people have, this feeling of failure, the feeling of self-incrimination, when indeed almost all of our weight loss patients are due to hormonal metabolic disorders, not related to how much you're eating or how you feel about your food. It is an unfortunate problem that we have today in medicine where prevention is not looked at as a primary source. It is always waiting for the disease to process, for example, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, hypertension, which is all part of the metabolic disorder syndrome. And we do not treat the preconditions, for example, midsection weight gain. Almost every one of my patients, we're talking about tens of thousands of patients, complain of midsection fat augmentation. And they can't do anything about it. No matter what they do, it doesn't go away. That's right, because a lot of it is hormonal, a lot of it is adrenal gland, a lot of it is other hormones that are circulating in the body that basically is a symbol that the patient is starving. So what we try to do, first thing off, is to talk about how, do the, how does the patient view themselves, which means how strong is that superego, critical, knocking down, you're a failure, it's not gonna work no matter what you try. That is what most patients say, no matter what I do, it doesn't work. Well, it's not what you do, it's whether you do something that's based on biochemistry versus what's based on some program that wants to restrict your calories or the keto diet, for example, which does not work long term. So like a hormone therapy, our weight loss is based on the psychological component of increasing your ability to be in control of yourself once you understand the biochemistry and pharmacology of weight gain. I had to become an expert because almost every one of my patients complained of the symptom. So 20 years ago, they used to say, oh, it's the hormones that's making me gain weight. Meanwhile, they're eating uh, you know, 6,000 calories of carbs a day. So you have to go ahead and make alterations, but the average human, in my experience, takes about six, seven weeks to make a change. In that period of time, you have to work on lessening the effects of the superego, or lessening the effects of this hypercritical sort of person yelling at you, which is inside you. It's you. It's not your mother anymore, right? There's an additional component to that very often with, with uh, eating disorders. There's an empty space inside. What happens is when we, again, go through trauma or abuse, part of self freezes in time to avoid the emotional pain. But that leaves an empty space. And it's an empty space that you can't put your finger on because you know you feel empty inside, but you don't know why or how or what to do about it. And that's where metaphor, metaphor therapy comes in. It helps to identify that empty space and find a way of filling it up so you're not looking to control your environment and looking to stuff yourself to get rid of persistent uncomfortable feelings. We can use the uncomfortable feelings to trace them back to the time of wounding, restore the self, and put you in control. Once you're in control, I think that makes all the difference. And in our practice for many, many years, one of the major staples of what we do, even though we are your counselors, your advisors, we do not take control of your life. We don't tell you what to eat. We tell you what groups of food are good, what groups of food are not good. We don't tell you exactly well how to live your life because that to me is very detrimental to the person. It is about control and we want the patient to be a partner versus someone who is told, do this. Unfortunately, too many doctors, especially in hormone replacement therapy, are just telling, here, take this pellet or use this cream. And when it doesn't work, patients feel, what did I do wrong? You know, how come it doesn't work with me? Well, it doesn't work with you because the therapy just doesn't work. It works maybe a little bit with some people, but we have to go ahead and, and, and encourage people to constantly ask questions. Use our website as information. Send it to your friends, send it to your mother, to your sister, to your, to your neighbor, because that's a dissemination of information and at the basis of our therapy. The more our patients know, the better they are and the happier they are. Control is an interesting word because we very often attempt to control our environment and the people around us because we have an uncomfortable feeling. And if we can control the way they react, then we feel better. When we learn how to control our own emotions and turn our negative emotions into healing resources, which is what the subconscious mind does, then you're really in control and you don't need to control your environment because the control is inside. So for all the therapists out there who are watching this, um, give us a call. Uh, we'll connect you with Dr. Siegel um, so you can discuss uh, the modes of therapy that he utilizes and the success that he has. 
as far as patients out there suffering from these these uh, situations, feel free to call us. Uh, I'm available to talk to you about your personal needs. Uh, no charge. We want to make sure that you're comfortable with uh, coming into our practice. We have now uh, people in every state in 50 countries who are under our therapy, and we want to welcome you to our family, and hopefully you do make that call. Uh, have a great day.